Hey, what is going on YouTube? This is Will and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things credit card rewards. So go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button for more videos like this. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the Amex Gold Card. So I've had this thing for going on 10 months now and I have to say, I really do think this is one of the best travel cards that you can have in your wallet. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the benefits, how I've been using it these past 10 months and whether or not it actually fits your needs. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, the first thing that you need to know about this card is that it does have an annual fee of $250, which you do have to pay in your first year. So it's not waived and you have to pay it on your first statement. So when you go apply for this card, just realize you're gonna to have to come out of pocket $250. Uh, if you want to add any authorized users, it's free to add any authorized users up to five. And then after that, it's only $35 for any additional ones. Now the card does come with a sign up point bonus, which is going to range from 40 to 50,000 points. Just depends on when you sign up for the card and what type of promos that they have going on. And if you value those points at a, I would say kind of conservative estimate of 1.5 cents per point, then the 40,000 point bonus is going to be worth at minimum $600 and then the uh, 50,000 sign up point bonus is going to be worth $750 when you redeem them for travel. So as you can see, the sign up point bonus should cover your annual fee for the next two or three years and anything else that you do with the car is just kind of icing on the cake. All right, so let's go ahead and get into all of the good stuff and get into the benefits. So the first major benefit is the points that you accumulate with the bonus spin categories. So with the gold card, you're gonna get 4X back at US supermarkets and 4X back at worldwide restaurants, as well as 3X back on um, booking travel with uh, airlines or through the travel portal, but I personally have never used this. But the 4X back on the restaurants in the US supermarkets are two great benefits, especially for a annual fee card of $250. So in terms of travel rewards cards, the MX Gold is definitely the best card when it comes to supermarkets. And just the Forex back on restaurants is very competitive as well. There's only one card that has a 5X or higher, and that is the City Prestige card, which gives you 5X. And then the Chase Sapphire Reserve card only gives you 3X back on restaurants. So for me personally, uh, I have been using the uh, Chase Sapphire Reserve card a little bit more for restaurants, but that's because I've been trying to accumulate some more Chase points. But I definitely try to get some Amex points in there as well. Uh, one negative thing about Amex cards in general is that they're not accepted everywhere. So there are a lot of restaurants my wife and I do go to on the weekends that don't take Amex cards. And that's just because it's expensive for them to actually swipe those type of cards. So we only have to, you know, use Visa's card. So I always have my Chase Sapphire Reserve card with me. Um, I can't always rely on my MX Gold card. Now, in terms of supermarkets, again, this is the only card that gives you 4X back on supermarkets, so I use this exclusively when I go grocery shopping. Next major benefit is the dining credit. So with the dining credit, you get $120 per year, which you can use $10 per month. Now, you can use this on services such as Grubhub and Seamless, which is like a food delivery service. But what I like about these two services is that you can order your food through the service and then pick it up yourself. So that's what I do. Um, I don't like paying delivery fees and you know tipping the driver. You'll just eat up that entire $10 credit just paying for that stuff. So I use it for that. There are also other, uh, some few restaurants that you can use the dining credit with as well, like Roof Chris Steakhouse, um, Shake Shack, and I think a couple of other ones too, but I personally just use it for Grubhub, just something easy to use. I just set a calendar reminder. So I remember to actually use it because you cannot roll that credit over in the next month if you miss that, if you miss using it. The next major benefit is the airline incidental fee credit of $100 per year. And this is probably the weakest benefit that this card actually has to offer. So the way that it works is once you get your card, you can choose one airline. And when you do any purchases that you make, with that airline is going to count towards that credit but only certain actual fees so think your check baggage fee if you need to choose your seat that type of fee uh, change your itinerary buy food or drinks on the plane all that is covered under the hundred dollar credit but if you need to actually buy your ticket you can't use that credit towards that so the my problem with this uh credit is that you can only choose one airline and you can't change it again until january so for me, I don't typically take the same airline over and over again. Just this year, I've probably flown four or five different airlines, I believe. And I've only flown three times this year. So I don't always fly the same thing, you know? So I think I've flown the same airline maybe once this entire year. 
But that's my kind of issue with this. This is really geared more towards people who travel a lot, a lot, even probably, you know, more towards the business type people. So for me, it's not a huge benefit, but if I can use it, I'll definitely take advantage of it. The final benefit with the gold card and just Amex in general, when it comes to these travel credit cards are the transfer partners that Amex offers. So compared to all other major travel credit card brands, City, Chase, Capital One, Amex has the most that you can choose from. And not only that, but they oftentimes have bonuses that they'll give you when you transfer your points out to certain um, airlines or hotels. Now I will say this only place where Amex lacks with the transfer partners is that it doesn't have Hyatt, which Hyatt has really awesome redemption rates when you use their points. Um, Amex only has Hilton, Marriott and choice privileges, which aren't the best use of your points. You'll pretty much just be using your points strictly for the airlines. If you try to use them for one of those hotels, you're not going to get a lot of value. It's going to take up a lot of your points in order to get a good redemption. So those are all of the benefits with this card and they're all great benefits, but are you really getting enough value with that $250 annual fee that you're paying? Well, that's why I have this slide here for you guys. So it's kind of a break even calculation. So with this card again, $250 annual fee, but you offset that with the food credit that you get every year, Grubhub, um, Roof Chris Steakhouse, Shake Shack, of $120 every year. So your effective annual fee is actually only $130. Now you see that I didn't include the airline incidental fee credit here, and that's just because I'm not sure if I personally would use that. Um, every year. So I'm just trying to be conservative. I'm just going to say that it's zero. If I do use it, great. That's just additional value that I didn't really plan on taking advantage of. Now, if I were to value those points that I accumulate with this card at one cents per point, and again, I only use this for restaurants and groceries, so the four point category. Well, at that one cents per point valuation, I would have to spend $3,250 per year in order to break even to get enough value to cover the annual fee. So pretty easy to do. But again, these points are definitely gonna be worth more than that. So if I were to raise that um, valuation up to 1.5 cents per point, that's gonna be worth uh, $2,166 every year in order to break even or just $180 per month. Now, even the 1.5 cents per point valuation is still pretty conservative. You can even go closer to two cents per point, especially if you're someone that's gonna be flying international. So $180 per month at a restaurant and supermarket is a super easy thing. I think most people will be able to do if they're looking at this card. So now that we've gone over all the benefits and the break even, there are a few things that we still need to go over before you actually decide to get this card. So the first thing is that Amex is not really the best place to start when you're getting into the credit card travel reward game. You do want to start with Chase, and that's for a few different reasons. First is the Chase 524 rule, which says that if you have accumulated five uh, new credit cards within a 24 month period, Chase is not going to accept any of your um, applications for any of their cards or co-branded cards. So you might not think, you know, five cards in a 24 month period, you might think that's a lot, but it really, really isn't. Especially when you actually start getting into this, you'll be getting the card maybe two or three months. So you're looking at, I mean, I've accumulated probably about 13 cards in the past uh, 24, 28 months or so. So it's definitely very easy to do to get a lot of cards in that time frame. So if you start getting cards like the City Card or MS cards, you're not gonna be able to get Chase cards because they really do offer a lot of great value, a lot of great sign-up point bonuses. Now, another reason that you wanna start with Chase is that it's a very good uh, beginner travel reward credit card. Just because the points, I think, are a little bit more flexible to use. Now, they do have less travel partners, but they do have the Chase Travel Portal, which is essentially like Expedia. So with the Chase Travel Portal, you can book your flight, your hotel, your car rental, even activities, cruises, all that stuff just through the uh, Chase Travel Portal using your points at an actual boosted value in points. So like 1.25 cents per point if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred card or 1.5 cents per point if you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. So if you don't feel like going through all the effort of transferring your points out to the airlines and to the hotels, then just using a Chase Travel Portal is not a bad way to go. Um, MX, they do have a travel portal as well. But with that, if you book your flight with the MX Travel Portal, you can do it at a one cents per point valuation, which is kind of, you know, whatever. But then if you were to like book a hotel or anything else, it's actually like less than one cents per point. So you don't want to use the MX Travel Portal too often. Now, another reason that you do want to start with Chase first is because 
if you aren't interested in travel cards, say after that first year, the good thing about Chase is that one, they have a downgrade path for all your Chase travel cards. So if you had a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you can very easily downgrade that card to the Chase Freedom card, which has no annual fee. So you don't have to cancel the card. It's still gonna stay in your credit report, which is good for your credit score. And definitely very good. With MX cards, you can't do that. The lowest card that you can downgrade to still has an annual fee that you have to pay for. So you're kind of stuck with pretty much just having to cancel your card if you're not gonna really you know, be using the travel rewards. Uh, another good reason to get Chase um, is you can use it for statement credit. So again, if you weren't someone that's gonna be interested with the travel you know, reward points and stuff like that, you can still use your points at a one cents per point valuation for a statement credit. With Amex, you're gonna be at a point, 0 0.06 cents per point valuation when you use your points for a statement credit. So those are just a few things that you should take into consideration before applying for this card. But yeah, so that's all I have for this video, guys. Really. Thank you for watching. Be sure to smash that like button if it helped you out. And if you do already have the gold card, feel free to use your referral link and put it down in the comments below. I've already maxed out my referrals for this year. So, you know, I'll give back to the community and for you guys that actually stay for the entire video. Again, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.